And there you go, there's a uh, butt log to a cherry. You probably shot it short, or I talked about, I was taking it down by the, uh, it was leaning towards the road, but I got it down using tack and, tack and block uh, and a pulley system to guide it down uh, away from the road. Don't want to be responsible for that. You just saw the maples unloaded a maple tree. And that tree was hollow in the base of it. So here's the rest of that cherry tree. Um, that one smaller one right there. I'm not sure if I'm going to mill that one or not. Some of these right here when they have curves in them is going to have a lot of uh, wave and curl in them. And those are big enough diameter when I make a flat spot to be good for cutting boards or, or just all kinds of projects. And now you can see why I took that cherry tree down. It's just started dying. Those pelted woodpeckers, they will just... Man, they'll just come and tear the heck out of this thing on wood. And I got a little burl there. I, I wanted to leave it all apart as one log and I'll take a couple cuts this way. And we might get some unique uh, figure pieces. And then... Uh, Depending on what I get, if there's a piece that's connected to this, I might not keep it a whole piece. I might cut it and then keep the other boards long. Just not sure. Got a nice crotch section there uh, for the cherry. So I think I could put that through. It's not too wide to go through the mill. It's just less than two feet. If not, I can cut a little bit off that side. And that's got a little bend down there. So all those little spots where they got curves and bends is a good place for... Uh, for you to find curl and uh, and wave and stuff in the cherry. So I like to keep it and cut through it. If the log's big enough, and that's what I do. So I'll just get you guys to come along with me on this one right here. We'll cut this butt log up uh, right here. And we're going to do a cell phone video today. So let me raise the forks up on this because I put you right there on top of the forks and uh, kind of like almost a live one. It's almost like taking a live video, but I don't have to worry with the live stream. Let me get you guys over here. Let me actually, let me flip you around. Let me flip you around. You get to see me for... Hey, there's me. If I do it this way, then I can look up and I can see what the camera sees. So I can make sure that everything's in the shot. Hey, I got the whole log. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's see what this log's going to get us. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bend. Got a little bit of a bend down here, so that's going to have some some character in there, especially on the other side where that curve is. But that's as long as I can get it. So uh, before it did a big bend in the tree, this part was actually the part that was leaning towards the road. Let's see. I'm curious how big this was. It's a decent sized cherry tree, 20 inches. 20 and 18, so it's an old one. So I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting at it. Um, it's got a little bit of a belly right here. I might take, because this will have, this will make me some oval pieces. Like you'll see that oval in the wood. So I like to, to uh, I won't start down where I want to be at that end. I'm going to start down so I can get a wide spot here and I can capture a couple one inch boards that will get some of that uh, look that look that I'm talking about in it. Kind of see where it would come out at. Oh, get me kind of a wider board there. About 19 and a half inches, something like that. Uh, like that does down. 
out of this end. Give me some.
I didn't realize that that piece was sticking out and it was hitting that metal and I was trying to get it. I thought it was just a hard spot of the wood. Um, so what happened was it caused it to go up and down a little bit and that blade is, uh, it's working. Put it that way, it works. But it's not doing a very good job. Uh, I was hoping to get more use out of that blade than I did. It's another resharp. Uh, I said, I'm not. Oh. Well, there you are. I shouldn't have slammed that down so hard. The uh, I didn't crack the screen. It just dusted off there. Hit pretty good in that corner though, right there. Oh yeah. I hate to break a brand new a phone, but it wouldn't be the first time. But the uh, blade is, you know, it's working. I just screwed this piece up. That was my own fault. Because um, I wasn't, I couldn't see this side. That the, um, this was fat right here. I needed to bring the end out. And I didn't do it. And I was trying to get it to go. I was like, well, I want to go. Because it's a butt log. I figured sometimes on the butt log, the butt log could be kind of hard, harder to cut. So um, I was kind of pushing it and I was fighting the metal and what that was doing was just lifting the saw up. So that wasn't too bright. But uh, hey, you know, sometimes I've been known not to be the sharpest tool on the shelf. So I got it wide enough. See, it's, it's got a bit of an hourglass right here. And uh, I was really hoping to go down uh, one more because it would open it up and I could get some wider boards out of it. But I don't know if I could get another decent cut out of that blade. I mean, it wasn't doing bad right here. But you hear it was struggling. So uh, let me see. I should be able to get that cut as long as that will go open wide enough. That was my problem. Oh, and I'm just messing up. You can always tell when I don't feel on my game. I don't feel the best. So. The uh, cold bug or flu bug or whatever the heck it is. But getting everybody. That was down 18. That's quite a bit higher. But it's not sharp enough for me just to skim through and cut it. It doesn't seem to want to do that. I could try it, but I don't think it will.
It's not going to have any of that. Too dull. So I cut quite a bit of dagger wood up with it. I cut the rest of that black oak with it. I cut a bunch of cherry with it. So it did pretty good. Seems like the reef sharps never do as good for very long as the. Uh, Blade it looks like it's got a crack in the blade right there too. So, yeah, fur. If you guys can see see me over there, so you can see me over here. Can you see me over there? Probably not. So, I gotta change the blade. So, let's pause it, and I'll be back when I get the blade changed. All right, I'm back. I got the blade changed. Uh, so we ought to be cutting pretty good still now. I cleaned that top edge up that I messed up. And uh, I don't know if you guys realize it, and if you're new to the channel, not only do we I mill and I sell a lot of lumber to other private people, we're not a big, you know, we're a private mill. We're not nothing, we're not a commercial mill. But I build, a lot of stuff out of the material that I cut. I've got a big shop. I build tables. I do laser engraving. I do uh, cutting boards, serving trays, oddball stuff, clocks, and all that stuff. And I do have a website too. Um, I just made it. It's not really doing a whole lot. I haven't really done much with it, but I haven't had much time to spend with it. Prices, you know, it's hard to price stuff online. Uh, and shipping's up and down, so uh, I'm kind of a new kitty cat at that whole thing. And uh, so if you get a chance, at least if you're not going to buy anything, if you go by the site and you just go click on all the pages and look at stuff, it helps to bring my um, algorithms up for the uh, to be visible on Google and stuff. And I think you can might be able to leave a... Um, a, uh, a, a survey or leave a, a you know um, a rating I, I don't know but anyways it's creative designs by Christopher J Shea senior dot com and if you put the forward slash and you hit store it'll take you right to the store instead of the main page but either way there's a button at the top that says shop so if you guys would do me a favor and go there and uh if you buy something, that's great. You know, it helps to support me and the channel. If not, you get to see some cool stuff, pictures and stuff of what I build. But I'd appreciate it because, like I said, it helps the algorithm and drive traffic to my website, which I'm hoping to build over the next year and get more stuff on there. But like I said, I have two antique mall locations as well. So um, I keep pretty busy. But um, hopefully as the channel grows... I'll be able to get me some more help and I have somebody to help film it. And it would uh, be so much better if I had somebody filming me live, dropping trees and doing all the stuff I do. It's just as difficult to do it by yourself. Safety is the first thing that I have to deal with, not worried about a camera. So, anyways, let's get this uh, log chewed up here and turned into some lumber. Didn't mess that one board up. It was only the last six inches, so it's not a big loss. I'm going to go ahead and make a skim cut across this where I messed it up a little bit and then go ahead and uh, I, I went in like four or five inches and screwed that up so I'll go down and I'll have to cut it off but um, these are nice like nine foot nine foot one log so it's made some num nice lumber
I can get that to reach all the way over there without knocking you guys over. Uh, now my goal, my goal is I'm going to have some two inch, probably two and an eighth inch cuts on it. And my goal is to have all boards that have all heartwood, solid heartwood, two inches wide. So, or two inches deep. I'm not sure how wide they're going to be yet. I got to keep working my way in and see. But man, this is a beautiful piece right here. So, try not to knock you guys off the machine again. Uh, probably not good for my phone. We're doing the old phone video today. So it's Monday. And my day started off, I was excited. I was super excited. And I got down and got this tree. Everything went perfect. It fell, dropped the tree and everything. And something you guys didn't see is we have a section where there's a house. It doesn't belong to us, but the original owner sold the lot beside it and there's four, there was four lots including that one lot well there's a lot on the right side one back in the woods and then there's another one in the back somebody over the weekend thought that it was going to be a fun place to go derby in on my beautiful grass and everything in the lot and everything i take care of there and uh not like driving up and seeing big ruts in it where somebody took their monster tires and just tore up all your work and left it but then the thing was we know it was the neighbor he doesn't want to confess to it but he drove straight from his yard onto our yard did donuts in his own yard went straight into ours <laughs> I, you know then his truck broke down down the road with mud all over it broke down in somebody else's driveway so i guess karma uh so that's kind of set me in a bad mood and i'm trying to get in a better mood now and not let that bother me because i can't I, you know, you crying over spilled milk is a waste of time. So, you hear a little bit of crack in my voice? Ah, dang on. This weather is hot, warm, hot, warm, hot, or hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And it's keeping me kind of like not really sick, but just a little sick. This is driving me nuts. I wish this spring and the warmth would get here so we could uh, move on. So, I'm going to roll that 90 degrees. And we're going to take some cuts and get down to the heartwood and get a nice wide spot here. And then we're going to flip it uh, again. We'll just keep going around until we get something that's all heartwood. And I want to be at two inches thick is what I'm looking for. trying to do that without smashing my thumb because I don't think that thing's ever going to heal I hit it again the other day I was doing something. I ended up hitting, hitting my damn thumb again. Yeah. If I keep smashing my thumb over and over and over, it's gonna heal. It's got a spot on it that's dead. It's like a flap that they did the stitches and then the stitches undid. I put some super surgical super glue and it kind of helped it some. But there's a big like pad. Yeah, like you get a callus on your hand. It's gonna be really thick. It'll probably die, peel off. There'll be a hole there. Eventually, my finger might fill itself back in. I don't know. All right, it's looking pretty good. 
it is a little low on that one end and I can get some more lumber out of it if I go ahead and bring up this side right here so let's move the chain down here so I might be able to lift up on it with a board it has it has toe kicks that are uh, crank them up but uh, I don't know where the crank went I can't find the handle for the the little cranks for it. Um, the problem is a lot of times when I lift up on it, that stupid blue clamp will come undone. I hope not. Um, it's usually I can lift up a little bit on it, stick a board. It doesn't need much, about three quarters. But see, I done cleaned up around the middle, and now I don't have any wood. That'll be thick enough. All right, blue clamp, don't you dare come undone. I think that blue clamp's gonna come undone on me. Let me uh, yeah, I don't think that blue clamp's gonna gonna hold it up there. I don't know if I can switch. If I can hold the log. If I, can. I just I don't know why I don't switch over to the uh I can hold it. Why I don't switch over to that one first. I should switch over to this one after I do the first cut. For the first side, I keep forgetting to do it. Now let's see if I can lift it up. Put this in there. Yeah, I know I can put the chain cable around it. I'm trying to cheat. I got this piece of walnut log here. I need to cut cookies out in my way. Don't take much leverage. I think that's good enough. Let's make sure it stays at stay the 90. bottom kicked out just a teeny bit. There we go. I think we got it. Woo. Yep, that worked. Nice and square.
quarters of an inch of sapwood left on that back edge. Like I said, I want to get uh, I want to get all all the material as far as those two inch thick pieces go. I want all that to be hardwood, just straight beautiful hardwood. So I'm trying to get all the sapwood off. These will make some neat. I made about an inch and a quarter. It makes some really nice uh, live edge shelves, straight lined on one side, nice little curve in it. So a couple years from now. <laughs> all right, let's get it rolled over again. a good 10 and a half 11 inches wide it'll be a hundred percent hardwood 100 percent beautiful hardwood yeah come on you can do it i don't need that clamp after this Yumper. Gotta make sure I take this piece of wood out too, or I'll be cutting it on an angle. As it rolls, it should kick that out. It'll be a beautiful, beautiful lumber in this piece, I'll tell you. Nice and easy, nice and easy. And I mean, there's like no bugs in the hardwood at all. It's just, it's just all in the bark. Them pelted woodpeckers, boy. They like that sweet wood of that cherry, so it ants. this end but I'm not going to go based on that I got about an inch and a half of sapwood that I got to get off of there I'll go down to what I want which is about 11 inches and I'll come back up an inch so I get a one inch wide board out of it. Okay, this side's not bad, 
It's a little, little on the drier, not as pretty look on the other side. You get closer to the sapwood, you can probably see. I'll hold it up for you. You'll see some of the, you can see some of the rim where this was drying out, was going bad, but a majority of it's still good. So there's a lot of wood there. So we haven't even got to the good part yet. So let's get that out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and roll it up. And uh, let's see, how wide are we going to have? Right at 11 inches. I think that's a, a pretty 2 inches by 11 inches wide. That's going to be some really nice cherry. I'm going to see if it swing it up again. Catch it my little pinky. Okay, let's try that again. Come on. Man. Try not to hit that thumb. That's what I'm nervous about is hitting my thumb. Stand these back up or they'll just roll over and the log will end up on my side. Good stuff here. It's gonna be a little bit of a bad stuff on one corner of one of the wood, one of the pieces, but I don't want to lose that much pieces. Let's see how much wood. Like right where I'm at right now is 11. I like to go up to 12. 12 is going to leave me with one board that's going to have a little bit of not so great on one side. But since I want the numbers to work out evenly, for two inches, we'll do that. See what it, see what it does down this end. See what 12 inches is. That's good enough. This top board right here is going to have a little bit of sapwood and stuff in it. But uh, I wanted the numbers to all work out for two inches. So what will happen is we'll probably end up letting it dry. And we might have to come back and make it a thinner board. But we'll start off with two inches. But uh, it's all sap, I mean all hardwood. That's the only little spot of sapwood on all of that whole camp. So this is going to be some nice, nice nice super nice cherry boards super nice oh yeah nice stuff
Don't push it that way, you push it on your board, dingy. I mean, enough of you guys have seen it, I'm sitting there sweeping it right back on top of the other. Now here's where it got me a little bit, and it's my own fault. Well, it's my own fault, but I kind of had to do it, and I knew this is like, if you, if you saw the short, you'll see I had to leave, say the road is right here, okay? And I'm probably 60 feet in the woods, and this tree is going up like this, and then it had a Y that went like this, and it was kind of towards the road. So I ran block and tackle back to a tree this way, and then the tractor that way, trying to pull the tree kind of like this away from the road. Not just parallel, but I wanted to have an over advantage of it going that way. Because if the tree starts to fall, slack would have become, it would have become, falling this way meant if I had it been on the tractor when it would have been forcing it to pull it over, it would have got slack in the cable as it fell and it could have got on the other side of one of the trees which I was using to keep it away from the road. So that meant I had to cut this right to the point where it was trying to fall and I already had tension on it but not cut it too far where I could get back to the tractor and pull it over and that meant in order to do that I kind of sacrificed and I tore out some of the wood out of the stump area. And I'll show you in just a second because it's probably on this one and maybe I cut about a foot off of it. I kind of knew I was sacrificing it, but um, unfortunately, sometimes this cherry splits really easy, so I can already see there's another check there. So um, that's kind of what, sadly, sadly, sometimes these things have to happen. Um, it's just the way it goes. I don't know how I can pick you guys up so you don't block the phone. But uh, I'll show you, I'll bring you around here, kind of show you what's going on. Ooh, I left that other blade hanging there, I'm catching my finger with it. So let me do, me to you, or me to hand, let me spin you back and see what I, I can see what you can see. So, there you are, you got 11 inches my finger in there 11 inches wide two inches tall um, beautiful I say there's a little teeny bit of sapwood on this one I knew there was gonna be sapwood on that one I knew there was a knot and that knot isn't the greatest so that's kind of like a a mediocre board there but this wood right here is all hardwood so this is what I was talking about when I pulled it over with the tractor I had to leave some of it attached and basically rip it so it pulled sections out of it and you can see it's got a check from the torque coming up in here you see that check right there going there and that's just part of what happened um like i said these are about nine feet long so you know if you had to cut a foot or so off of it that would be what it would be still nonetheless the tree was getting attacked and dying so it was well worth taking down. I'm just glad everything went successful this morning. I went and looked at it last Thursday. Um, thought about it all weekend. Came up with a plan of attack. How I wanted to rig the tree up uh, to take it down safely. I considered one thing given or another thing given or safe fails that would fail when I was pulling it. I kind of wanted a backup. In case something went so I had to think it through before I was went down there and cut it down and uh, it all went well it all went well so it's been kind of a, a long video but uh, sometimes it takes about an hour to cut these up and I didn't uh, I'm using just a good old phone so sometimes I got to do that um, it's just what I have on me at the time it seems to work better than a GoPro, and I do have a program on my phone where I could download it to that program and do little time lapses and edit it and do all kinds of fancy stuff, but I'm lazy. And uh, this is free for everybody, so I'm doing the best I can 
one day if I become a big boy YouTuber, then I'll have a cameraman and maybe somebody to do the editing for me. But that ain't going to happen anytime soon. So this is what you get. I hope you enjoyed it. Be safe. Take care. And uh, be blessed.